All right, hey guys, what's going on? So today we are going to be looking at the a review, basically. We've come very, very far. We're towards the end of the book now, and this review is going to cover everything probably from like chapter five or something like that. So let's get right into this. So again, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. So we are a long time ago, well, eons ago, let's say, we looked at the Lagrangian. We also looked at the time evolution operator. From the Lagrangian, we were able to infer what our interaction Hamiltonians were, right? So we could add terms to the Lagrangian, and those terms, some of those terms could be interaction parts. Along with that, we had this time evolution operator, and we said, if it obeyed the Schrodinger equation, and um, it if it obeyed the Schrodinger equation and we wanted it to obey also the rules of the Taylor series, um, we were led to a Dyson series. Now, we, the Dyson series, what it does is it'll take in our interaction Hamiltonians. And from that, it'll help us get terms in a perturbation series. The, this, again, the terms in a perturbation series, we, uh, if you remember a couple of videos ago, each, the Dyson series, again, is 1 plus the integral of the, inter, the interaction Hamiltonian plus the integral of uh, 2 of the, uh, two of the um, interaction Hamiltonians plus 3 plus 4 and so on. Um, and each one of those pieces to the Dyson series was important and instrument, uh, becomes important and instrumental in calculating amplitudes, uh, scattering amplitudes. So by means of Wick's theorem, we were able to get field contractions, right? So when we apply Wick's theorem, uh, we were able to get uh, field contractions. So these were all the important contractions that we talked about. And so from the field contractions, we could then use brute force and calculate some scattering amplitudes, or we could take the easy way, or the easier way, and use Feynman diagrams, right? We, from the Feynman diagrams, uh, we applied the Feynman rules and also got scattering amplitudes. All right, so let's, so again, so we got terms in a perturbation series, we use Wick's theorem, we had get, use the field contractions, we get scattering amplitudes. So these are all very important um, means to an end here, the, the end being scattering amplitudes. Or we can go this route, right? We can take the Feynman diagrams, understand the Feynman rules, and get scattering amplitudes. But scattering amplitudes are the name of the game here, right? The, I'll do this. Scattering amplitudes are the name of the game. This is the end goal. Okay, and then from the scattering amplitudes, if we include higher order terms, we included higher order terms, we were able to get normalized, uh, a renormalized coupling, right? So we have these, within the scattering amplitudes, we have the coupling constants. The coupling constants tell us something about the degree to which uh, higher order um, approximations uh, are useful. Those are the constants or play a role in our, in our scattering amplitudes. That's where the higher order terms come from. And then when we consider initial scaling conditions, right? So the initial starting point, the two initial particles at some speed, uh, some momentum coming together, we were then able to get renormalized, uh, the renormalized group equation, right? That was, if you recall, I'll write it down. Um, this guy right here. Right. So there's a lot here, right? This was this is probably at least twenty videos worth of summary and 
you should we should, we should give her we should give ourselves a pat on the back. Uh, we're at a point now where we are left talking about symmetry breaking. This is something that is very useful, very important, and very quite frankly very interesting. Uh, it's a very interesting consequence of quantum field theory. Symmetry breaking is something that uh, it, it's it, it's something that sort of allows us to get a whole new outlook on on the world. I think it, it what it's going to teach us is it's going to teach us a little something about perhaps how the early universe formed, right? Using logic and using quantum field theory, which is going to be pretty interesting, but it also tells us a little something about thermodynamics. And um, there's going to be hints here and there of uh, f- uh, phraseology from uh, from thermodynamics. Uh, as things are hot, they tend to be more in a gaseous phase. And uh, gaseous phase particles, if you take that to be a state, that's a very symmetric state to be in, right? Uh, whereas a solid, not so much, right? If I have... A solid, for example, if I take something like this stapler, if I rotate the stapler, then it that's a completely different configuration. Whereas if I had a gas, a box of gas, and I rotate the box of gas, it looks pretty much the same. So in some sense, when things are more gaseous or less stiff, then um, there's more symmetry there. Whereas if something is more solid, there's less symmetry. And this is going to be directly correlated to the mass terms that we see in the Lagrangian. Um, so but what we can do here is let's add to our review ahead of time. We'll add uh, symmetry breaking. And I'll do this in this color because this is this is a very very interesting uh, topic. But anyways, here this is our this is our mind map essentially for quantum field theory, at least an introduction to quantum field theory. Uh, again, as I've mentioned in the in the last video, you guys have spoken. The next topic is going to be focused on Lie groups, Lie symmetries. The algebras, and um, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun, but at the same time, I'm gonna be also pumping up more content, not just on that, but on other topics as well. And if you guys are interested in this in this other type of content, and you want to get it early, then I might be starting up Patreon again. So, uh, with that being said, if you like this type of content, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next video.